Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of Pirumal Swastya and the Nudge Foundation, I welcome all of you to the first session on day two of the health track under Charcha 2021. We have Dr. Vandana Shiva with us this morning. Welcome, Dr. Shiva, to Charcha 2021, the forgotten amidst the pandemic. Dr. Shiva is a trained physicist and holds a PhD on quantum theory from University of Western Ontario in Canada. She founded Navdanya, a national movement to protect the diversity and integrity of living resources, especially native seed, the promotion of organic farming and fair trade. In 2010, Dr. Shiva was identified as one of the top seven most powerful women on the globe by the prestigious Forbes magazine. Dr. Shiva, has been the recipient of many national and international awards and honorary doctorates. She has won the Alternative Nobel Prize, Order of the Golden Ark, Global 500 Award of the UN, an Earth Day International Award, Lenin Ono Grant, P Grant for Peace Award, Sydney Peace Prize, among many others. It is a pleasure to have you with us this morning, Dr. Shiva, to talk about One Health Approach, a very important topic during these trying times. Over to you, Dr. Shiva, and thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Rachita. Thank you to the Pyramid Swas uh, and to all of you who are here. And in these times of COVID and climate disasters, recognizing and awaking to the fact that the planet's health and our health is one health. That to me is the one health approach. Over the last 50 years, I have been learning about these connections because as was mentioned by Rachita, my basic training is in quantum theory. And thank goodness I did that training because it makes a total break from the mechanistic worldview. The mechanistic worldview, which is very recent and just a few hundred years old, was put in place by people like Descartes, people like Bacon, who define the world as separate entities, totally determined, totally fixed, totally atomized. And Descartes went to the extent of saying, I'm a thinking thing without a body. I said, poor man, how on earth will be able, he be able to give us the knowledge of how to take care of the body if he denies the body itself? And of course, Bacon went out of his way to deny the body of the earth as a living earth. He said, subjugating her, turning her into your slave, that mastery is what will create supermen who can rule the world and create man's empire. But man's empire is what leads to the catastrophes we are living through. We are very fortunate to be part of an ecological civilization, an amazing civilization that has given us sophisticated science the sophisticated science of health of Ayurveda, sophisticated science of agroecology, of how to grow food in the right way, sophisticated science of diet, a sophisticated science of diversity. Tomorrow is our Independence Day, and I'm particularly happy that you have organized your meeting on the eve of Independence Day. And as I have repeatedly said, diversity is the Hindustan way. This is what we have cultivated in our minds, in the world around us. That's why our farms are so diverse, our cultures are so diverse. Our uh, ability to live with diversity, but more importantly, how to cultivate health through diversity. This is what I've done in terms of learning about the health of ecosystems. But over the last decade, my work has compelled me to recognize that our health is so deep, deeply connected to the health of the world, the health of the planet. We are part of a living earth, one complex ecological web woven through biodiversity. Separate article, particles cannot connect. It's the biodiversity that weaves the web of life from the microbial to the planetary level. We are not separate from nature and the earth, the illusion that was imposed on us. It was very much part of colonialism. And my new book that I'm writing um, is how we move to uh, ecology of care, an economy of care. 
And the latest book I finished called Oneness versus One Percent has quite a large section on this break and this idea of separation and the idea of essentialism. Biodiversity is the connector. And biodiversity, we are finding increasingly, is the very fabric of life. It is the organizing principle of healthy ecosystems. I learned this when I was working as a volunteer for the Chipko movement. That the reason the women of Chipko were defending the forests with their diversity was because they were defending the health of ecosystems and were saying, please do not look at these forests of the Himalaya as timber mines. Look at them as the source of our water and our soil and our oxygen. Today, with COVID, we are realizing the value of oxygen. With the water crisis and the pyramid swast works on water, I've just been told, well, we need to go into the roots of what are the water crises. I've done many books, done water wars, and many reports on the roots of the water crisis. The health of all beings is connected to the food, the nutrition cycle, the hydrological cycle, the water cycle, the cycle of breath. If there weren't trees and plants that convert carbon dioxide into oxygen, we wouldn't have breath. And amazing research is showing, A, how much richer vegetation rich areas are, natural forest rich areas are. In the same town, you can measure the microbes in the park and in a parking lot. And now they're finding why people are falling sick. Biodiversity is the source of health in the continuum of life. It makes healthy soils, which is what I have worked on now through Navdanya over the last many decades. It produces healthy, nutritional, biodiversity rich plants, which provide nutritious food and it nourishes the gut biodiversity. So Agni has always been recognized in Ayurveda, but it's only in the last 10 years, the science of the West is waking up to the value of the gut to health. And more and more doctors, more and more scientists are realizing the gut of the health begins with the health of the soul. These disconnections we will have to overcome in one health. The biodiversity outside and the biodiversity within us is one health. The biodiversity in our soils, on our farms, on our plates, it cultivates and nourishes the biodiversity within us. And diseases and sickness are really the rupture of these relationships. They are the dysbiosis. Increasingly, people are finding metabolic disorders are connected so much to the kinds of diets and foods we are eating. They call lifestyle disease, but I call them food system diseases. I call them diseases of violating the laws of the earth. The One Health approach is an ecological approach that sees relationships, because ecology is about relationships. It is the science of relationships in our household, the earth, but in our particular places, our particular homes, our particular ecosystems, including the ecosystem within. We are one humanity on one planet, and we will not have one health if we continue to separate and divide. When we respect the integrity of other species, their health and ours is ensured. But when we destroy forests to grow GMO soya in the Amazon, the richest ecosystem of the world, to then provide that GMO soya for animal feed, a big debate taking place in India right now, because they're violating every law to import GMO feed for the poultry industry. Every law has been violated. You know, Poultry feed is food for chicken. Chicken is food for those who eat chicken, otherwise we wouldn't have a food poultry industry. 
And the definition of our agencies that are supposed to take care of food safety are saying it's a non-food. So much of my work over the last three and a half decades has been based on addressing the falsehoods that get created just to defend a narrow, narrow, narrow interest while destroying the one health of the planet, of animals, of human beings. We know now, and this research has grown over the last few years, that the last three decades of basically deregulation led to massive invasion into forests. Why are we growing palm oil in Indonesia? Why are we thinking of growing palm oil in India and chopping the forests of the Nicobar and Andaman Islands and the Northeast? We know that all the new emergent infectious diseases from the Ebola's and the HIV's, from the Zika's to the Lyme, they have all emerged because of deforestation. Karnataka in India has very, very detailed studies on the Kiasnur disease, the monkey disease. Now the problem really is not that viruses cause the disease by themselves. When the virus is on the monkey in the Kiasnur forest and the monkey is in the forest, One Health tells us everything's fine. But when we destroy the home of the monkey and it starts to come into our homes, that's when these viruses start to move, the ticks start to move, and we start to get new diseases. SARS, Corona, all of these are a result of forest invasions, destabilization of the homes of animals, and then the jumping from animals to humans. Viruses that were not diseases for the animals become diseases for humans. And therefore, there's no absolutism about this is a bad virus and this is a good virus. It's that Cartesian um, mode that blocked our thinking of One Health. And we have to shed Cartesianism. I know if five decades ago I studied quantum theory, it was really to say, no, this doesn't make sense. Descartes was wrong. The world is a world that's thriving and living and self-organized. So when we destroy the biodiversity in the forest, we create emergent diseases. But when we destroy the biodiversity in our gut, through the bad food, the junk food, the ultra-processed food, what we do is create the metabolic disorders, the chronic diseases that are now a new epidemic. 72.69 million Indians now have diabetes. We're an epicenter of diabetes. And even though these were forgotten during COVID, more mortality was taking place. The comorbidities were accelerating. If you look at um, the risks of dying of a COVID infection because of diabetes, it shoots up to 9.2%. It's less than 1% in normal condition. So increase the risks of death. And if you have cancer, it's 7.6% increase. These were the forgotten epidemics, which needed care in and of themselves. But they needed double care during COVID because they increased the risks. Look at the figures. The number of cancer victims is 1.39 million. And it's supposed to increase to 1.57 if we don't start addressing the root causes of these diseases. One health means we respect the rights of all species because our health and their health is interconnected. We respect their ecological space. They deserve to have a home. We talk of ourselves as Vasudeva Kutumbakam. But if they are part of our family, how can we rob them of their homes and then create pandemics? We have to respect ecological processes which connect us. And we have to respect ecological limits, the part that has been forgotten. Every disaster we are facing right now. What is climate change? Not respecting the planetary limits of the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle. Why are the disasters taking place in Kinnor, in Himachal, in Mayant, Uttarakhand, or Sikkim, or across Maharashtra and in Karnataka? 
the same deforestation that is leading to diseases is also leading to an unstable earth, an unhealthy earth. Because Gaia, as the earth, is a living system. She organizes herself and she created the right temperature and she created the right climate for our species to emerge 200, 300,000 years ago. That's how young we are in the four billion years of life of Gaia. And in most of this time, we've lived fine. You know, the Aboriginal Australians farmed for 60,000 years. We in India farmed for on which we farm. And just a hundred years, just a short hundred years of the new ability to make new chemicals, 200 years of mining fossil fuels to burn them. 600 million years it took the earth to take plants and and see life and bury them down deep down and fossilize them. Fossil fuels are nothing but the burial grounds of living matter and they should have stayed burial grounds. And the wars that are taking place right now, whether they be real wars as in the Middle East or they be geopolitical wars of climate change are all related to taking this wrong step. We have a chance to stop invading forests. We have a chance to stop invading our gut. You know, bad food is really an invasion into our gut and we need to become awake to it. We've developed a militaristic and mechanistic attitude to life and that is the problem. We said insects are our enemies, wipe them out. Just today I was reading a piece in science where insecticide being used to kill the ticks and the Lyme disease have now got emergence of resistance and they're becoming even more virulent in infections. No. Pesticides have created new problems. They've destroyed the pollinators. One third of the food we eat comes from them. 200,000 people are dying of pesticides every year. And then we said, oh my God, the plants, how can we have biodiversity of plants? They're weeds, kill them. Forests with diversity, wipe it out. So many of the forest fires, definitely in California in, and in Canada, are because they're spring roundup to kill all the plants so they can have conifers to mine. And now it's very, very inflammable because roundup is a desiccant. It kills everything green. And you get climate change, you get a tiny bit of a lightning strike or anything, and you have forests. Yeah. Floods and forest fires, this is our moment right now why we talk of One Health. And to be blind to it would be blind. I call it the monoculture of the mind, blindness. So we declared war on plant diversity and now we're declaring war on microbiodiversity. Microbial diversity is the very basis of life. There'd be no life without microbes. The loss and erosion of diversity is the basis of disease. And that is what my learning over the last five decades has been. But there is another part of the forgotten among the pandemics. That more people are dying of hunger today because of the hunger virus than are dying of the COVID virus. Seven per minute for COVID, 11 per minute because of hunger. And One Health for me also means that we are able to think of the hunger of the child who's dying. I mean, look at the figures. For me, this should be our national emergency. And we should all be uniting to address it because we have the systems to address it. In the 2015-2016 National Family Health Survey, 35.7% of our children are underweight, 38% are stunted, 21% are wasted. We are destroying our own future. Of the 1 million under five deaths, in 2017, more than 706,000 were attributed to malnutrition. We just start counting, but you know, again, it's blindness. You don't see, you don't look, and you say it doesn't occur. But the hunger of the child who's dying, ah, diabetes, the COVID, the climate change are one health. You cannot separate justice and the right to health from sustainability. 
you cannot separate the right to food from the right to health. These integrations are the integrations we need to make in One Health. And we have, as I said, inherited a very sophisticated way of thought. We actually say all the time, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, let all beings be happy, let no one be sick and diseased. Let's bring this civilization to reality. This is our calling today. Soil is what I've worked with. And soil health is our health and it's one health. Now, Albert Howard was sent to India in 1905 by the British Empire. They had no discipline called agricultural science that time, but they did have an empire and they had plantations, indigo plantation and cotton plantations and timber plantations. And he was sent as the imperial botanist. He was sent to Pusa to start an institute. The Pusa Institute is called Pusa Institute because it was supposed to have started in Pusa in Bihar, but there was an earthquake and then it moved to Delhi. But Howard was supposed to set it up. And because he was a good scientist and sci good scientists aren't blind and they don't wear blinkers, good scientists have open eyes. They observe, they learn, they see relationships. And Howard as a brilliant scientist found the soils were fertile. He had been sent to improve Indian agriculture. He saw the soils were fertile. He saw lots of insects, but no pest damage. And he says, I am going to make the Indian peasant and the pest my professor to do, learn how to do good farming. And he wrote a book called The Agricultural Testament, in which he talks about the fact that the soil is living, and I have learned this from the Indian peasants. The soil is, as a matter of fact, full of living organisms. It is essential to conceive of it as something pulsating with life, not as dead inert matter. When I did my work on the Green Revolution in 84, after the 84 Punjab problems, I realized every textbook says soil is an empty container for pouring nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium into it. No, it's living and thriving. There could be no greater misconception than to regard the earth as dead, is what Howard says. A handful of soil is teeming with life. The living fungi, bacteria, protozoa, invisibly present in the soil complex are known as the soil population. And this is what gives life. And for those who don't know how thriving the soil is, not on its own, because when you put chemicals, it is dead soil. It doesn't have living matter. But if you put a little bit of organic matter, and this is what organic farming is all about, you create healthy soils. And then healthy cre soils create healthy plants, and healthy plants eaten by us create our health. One gram of soil contains one billion bacteria, 200 million fungi hyphae. One teaspoon contains six billion microorganisms. One cubic meter of healthy soil has 25,000 kilometers of fungi. And these fungi are quite amazing, these mycorrhizal fungi. In one inch, they're eight miles long, and they can go look for nourishment and nutrition wherever they can find it. It's not the fertilizer you apply to the roots. It's what the fungi are doing. And I am just so happy that we've been able to rebuild our fungi populations. We've been able to rebuild our beneficial bacterial population. And when you create a vacuum, that's when you get pathogens, whether it be in the soil or on the plants or in our gut. We are now realizing the relationship between plants and the fungi is a symbiotic relationship. The fungi bring food and the plant gives carbohydrates and the two flourish. And when the fungi are bringing food, the plants are able to produce far more nutrition. They're able to produce far more polyphenols. And the data is now saying, showing that over the last 70 years of food, not in India, in the West, over the last 70 years, food has lost 90% of its nutrition. 6% decline in protein, 9% decline in phosphorus, 15% decline in iron, vitamin C, decline in calcium, decline in vitamin A. And then we want to do golden rice in Philippines. We rejected it. Golden rice came to India. We said we don't need it. 
when there, and then it's being forced as biofortification. We have lost nutrition in our food because of soil depletion. This is one health. And fortunately, because of the work we've done in Navdanya now over the last 34 years, <coughs> we have built back organic matter. We have built back our nourishment in the soil. And let me just share with you some data because this is just so important. Apologies for looking at uh, my report. This is where our One Health comes from. So in the chemical soils, where we are applying nitrogen fertilizer, the nitrogen is down 22%. Organic soils, it's up 100% because the microbes are producing your nitrogen. Phosphorus, up 63%. Potassium, up 84%. But then you look at the elements we need. Zinc, so important in immunity. 35% collapse for 20, over 20 year study. 14% up in organic soils. Manganese, so important for attention deficit disorder. 17% down in chemical soils, 14% up. And chemical soils have destroyed 12% of iron. Are we then surprised that we are not growing nitrogen, uh, uh, nutrients in our soil? We are not growing nutrients in our plants. We are basically just creating mechanisms for the movement of toxic chemicals through our ecosystem, including finally to our gut. And to make this happen, we have to destroy the biodiversity. Because we have to create monocultures, you know, external inputs need monocultures. And those monocultures now have been called high yielding. My life's work since 84 was saying, but the Punjab farms with monoculture of rice and wheat don't produce more than the Baranajas of Inabang. <laughs> or the Navdanyas. So I started to look at the biodiversity productivity and we realized the yield per acre is a mismeasure. It merely measures a commodity that leads, whether it rots in the go down of FCI, how much nutrition it has, what happened to the farm, what happened to the farmer, what happened to the soil, it measures absolutely nothing. And our work is shifting from biodiversity uh, from monocultures to biodiversity, from yield per acre to mono to health per acre and nutrition per acre. And our work with real farms and real farmers is showing we could feed two times India's population with biodiversity intensification instead of chemical intensification. And let me finally come. Oh, and by the way, our nutrients are up 106%, copper 61%, magnesium 243%, molybdenum 64%, zinc. This is one health. And finally, our gut. Just recently now, as I said, in the West, they are waking up to the fact that the gut matters. We are interbeings. We are multi-species. The human species is not a human species. We are 90% other species. We are 380 trillion viruses in our viral. In our gut alone, we have 100 trillion microbes. This is what makes our health. Therefore, we cannot. I mean, if we were to declare war on microbes, we'd have to declare war on 90% of our cells. And the militaristic idea of managing health is now being given up, even in the West. For decades, mechanistic militaristic disease models set the agenda for medical research. As long as you could fix the affected mechanical part, we thought the problem could be solved. There was no need to understand the ultimate cause. And now we are realizing it's the microbiota. And when we destroy the biodiversity of the gut because we've destroyed the biodiversity in the soil and the biodiversity of plants, we get disease. But health can be rejuvenated. And more and more doctors are moving into organic farming. When we rejuvenate the soil, we rejuvenate the biodiversity of our, of our plants and our food, we can actually heal the gut. This is the one health we need in terms of rejuvenating the health of the planet. And the beauty is the same actions that help the human being become healthy are what help the earth become healthy. The solutions to climate change and the solutions to the new diseases and chronic diseases are the same. Biodiversity, biodiversity, biodiversity. One health is woven through biodiversity. I feel grateful I've been given this opportunity to do this work over the last few decades. And I hope we can continue this work together because 
conserving biodiversity is anyway a duty. But when it is the basis of our health, it also becomes our right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. Thank you for such an insightful session this morning. And uh, my key takeaway from the session is that, you know, our health is dependent on the health of the planet. We are not separate and biodiversity is actually the connector. So biodiversity outside as well as inside is actually what is one health. So we have a few questions for you, Dr. Shiva. Sure. The audience is interested in knowing. So I'll just post the first question. Uh, so there's a question which says that what will make people understand the interconnectedness of people, animal and environment? Uh, in a part of what has happened in uh, with this mechanistic worldview is the assumption that words can transmit living experience and they can we can have partial communication through words. And the reason I have built an earth university at Navdanya is precisely for the kind of learning you're talking about. In fact, I have to rush as soon as I finish. I have to rush. There's a course waiting on our farm on learning all these connections. And so you are all welcome. I, you know, I, I will send to Rachita the, the links or you can go to the Navdanya website Go to Navdanya Earth University and you will find all the courses that we offer. And I offer an intensive course in October for all these connections. We call it return to Earth. Return to Earth means return to the fact that we are part of the Earth. And these connections make our health, make the health of the soil, make the health of the plants, make the health of animals and make the health of the planet. So it's 1st to 14th. So if you go to the website of navdanya.org or you Google um, Earth University at Navdanya, you'll be able to find both Navdanya and the courses. And we are there to serve. We are, my life is a service to the earth and people. So we are more than happy to serve any of you who want to learn more about this. I'm sure the audience has noted it and we'll also circulate it to the participants. So everybody can log on to the website and uh, look at the details of the course. And for most of us who are interested in learning more can always enroll. Thank you, Dr. Shiva for highlighting that. Uh, the second question from the audience is that how can One Health concept be implemented at individual level? What can I do at my home? So it, it's become the basic, you know, what can I do at my home in order to get to the One Health concept? So the first thing is, given that the health of your gut is what makes your health, whether it's your diabetes or your cancers or, your, um, or the increasingly uh, explosive degenerative neurological diseases, it all begins in the gut. And most of these are totally reversible by healing the gut. So begin with food. Now, that, of course, means you can't make lazy choices. You know, what is consumerism? Consumerism means you've handed your brain to those who want to sell you junk, junk clothing, junk food, and you said, you think for me, I'll stop thinking. But our gut is our second brain. And it is telling us to start thinking for ourselves. So A, begin eating diversity, eating organic, then you'll say, but it's expensive. It's not expensive in production. It's made expensive because organic is treated like an orphan and punished. And we are made to certify four lakhs a year we spend. On the other hand, chemical is subsidized. And that bad food produced at high cost to the earth and people becomes cheaper. All the junk food is subsidized hugely. Of the 20 rupee junk food packet, the farmer receives four paisa. So start thinking. What are you eating? How was it produced? Who got the benefit? What did it do to the earth? And this is, you know, I've done about 20, 25 books and about 50 reports. They're all available from Nabdania. And you can just, again, order them and read them. Finally, if you have a little space, a balcony, a windowsill, a little lawn in front, make it a garden. We have a movement called Gardens of Hope. Come to Nabdania to learn how to start the garden. And finally, create a group, create a healthy food community, create a one health community, and we will help you connect to farmers. 
we will help you get direct, you know, big thing of no middleman, no middleman, no middleman. Let's make it real. Let's really connect the soil, the plants, the farmer, your gut in a beautiful continuum of love and peace. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. So for, this is for all the participants that we have support at hand. It's just that we need to take action today. Uh, the next question, Dr. Shiva, is that how do we integrate the whole One Health approach in the policy space? So you might remember that um, in England uh, and then in Germany, there was something called a mad cow disease because cows were fed, being fed ground up, totally ground up meat of dead cows. And, but the nutrition was perfect. So nutrition said, good diet, but the cows were getting mad. And then the humans who ate the mad cow beef were also getting CJD. That's when in Germany, I knew because the minister was my friend, Renate Kuna, they said, we are going to integrate agriculture, consumer affairs and environment into one. And they reorganized. So what we've been through because of chemical agriculture and the selling of toxics, we splintered our food system. You know, we have consumer affairs, we had food safety, we have agriculture. In agriculture, we have three departments. You know, it's fragmented. So we need to integrate. One health means we need to start looking at agriculture, food, nutrition, and health as one health system. Uh, our lens has to be health, not profits for a few and dispossession for the farmers. That means we need, you know, movements and, you know, institutions like Pyramal Swas, just like the pesticide lobby and the GMO lobby is lobbying to import GMO soya for animal feed. You need to be there in those ministries and we can work with you on how to create this new One Health through One Integration. We have the biggest feeding program of the world. There is no program bigger than the Indian public distribution system, but we are feeding them nutritionally empty food. If we turn that public money into good nourishment and redefine the PC, PDS and the ICDS as health programs, rather than feeding the poor the junk and rotten food, we have one health. So reorient agriculture and reconnect what was divided, connect the food distribution to the farming, connect the food distribution to health. Very easy. The public money gets used for the public good and the public health and the health of the planet. We've done this work. We are there to make it work at policy level for those who are working all the time at policy level. Connected to this only, Dr. Shiva, I would like to ask that, can we visit the Navdanya uh, University, the Earth University? It's absolutely. Please come in groups, come individually. Um, you know, when I started, I started to save seeds for biodiversity. And then out of it grew all the systems of food. And, all this, and then we started to look at soil. I said, oh my God, we are growing soil. And then people said, we want to learn. And out of it grew an amazing school. It's grown organically. And we have cottages, we have rooms, we have place to stay. You eat organic food fresh, you go pluck your own food. And this afternoon we'll be making a meal of uncultivated edibles that are killed when you spray Roundup, but they are more nourishing than anything else. In one square meter I counted last year, 12 plants. 12 plants, five of them were edible foods. The remaining were medicinal plant, the Philanthus Neruri, you know? The amazing Bhuri Amla, amazing cure for liver. It's abundant on our farm. Please visit. Just write to me and I'll put you in touch with our coordinators and managers. Yes. That's such a lucrative offer. And I think after what we've all gone through past one and a half years, it sounds more like a vacation, an organic vacation for all of us. Make Thank it, you, you so know, much. from Delhi, it, it, I used to go in my father's old Austin car. In the 60s, we used to drive in three and a half hours. Then the traffic built up and it became an eight hour ride. But right now it's about a four and a half, five hour ride if you leave at the right time. So, you know, it's really a weekend away for you, all of you who are in Delhi, but anyone anywhere in the world. And really not only is the beautiful farm and nature there to teach you, our farmers are with you. 
the pollinators are there and I'm there. I'm totally there for you. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. I'll just take uh, probably the last question for the session. Uh, what are the steps, if you can highlight, to create a One Health Society? I know you've, you've talked so much on this, but just to put it in a response, the last response for the session, what are the steps to create One Health Society? The first response is we have to realize that we are related to all other beings and therefore we must protect them. <coughs> well, I have started with our farmers across India because, you know, farm trees were being cut down and farm trees are very important for preventing disasters. So every Raksha Bandha now and Raksha Bandha is coming next week. Tie a raki in a tr on a tree in your neighborhood that that tree is giving you health. It's giving you oxygen. Like I said, start a garden. Start a garden and start a food community. Start a food club. Start cooking food together. During COVID, people on their own started community kitchens. That's what got people food. The langars just flourished. Oxygen langars came up. So if health is one and it's woven through biodiversity and what biodiversity moves is nourishment, it moves nutrition, therefore it's a food system. And therefore taking care of the food system is the way place where we begin to cultivate one health. And we have better food, we have more fun, we build community. Loneliness is a big part of the lockdown syndrome. You overcome loneliness. And let me just mention, let's turn the mycorrhizal fungi into our teachers. You know, they bring nourishment and feed the plant. Let us spread ourselves like mycorrhizal fungi and create living communities of one health it's in our hands we begin with our minds our gut and then the world around us thank you thank you dr shiva for an amazing session this morning and as rightly said diversity is the hindustan that is what we have cultivated and that is what we should uh, look forward to cultivating in the years to come and survey Bhavantu Sukhina, all well-beings, all human beings, all beings should be happy at the end of the day. So I think on the eve of Independence Day, that's a beautiful thought that you've left our audience and the organizers with. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Dr. Shiva. Pleasure having you with us at Chacha. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachita and you. everyone Thank at Miramal. You. And Thank for everyone everybody. who was part of it. Like I said, you're very welcome to Navdanya Beat with the Beat Earth University. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. Thank you. Thank uh, for all our participants, the next session starts at 12 on NCD's The Impending Wave. Look forward to having all of you. Thank you, Dr. Shiva, once again. Thank you. Thank you.